All right. Here's the Ten Ortiz, supply guy from hell. Uh, let me step around here, get a little more. Oh, there. Oh, man, we can bring out those features now. Disclaimer: uh, Everything that I say cannot be. Oh, I think I say some things are small. are smaller than they appear. That's right. <laughs> I'm starting to pan big, down. Oh, sorry. I am pretty big though, so. Oh, yeah. Look at those. Yeah, those those biceps. biceps. They just. You're benching like what? 380 on a good day. Uh, 380. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So ounces? No, no, no. 380. Pounds. Oh, okay. So anyway, I've been going around talking to people that I know and, uh, you know, kind of giving people an idea of what it's like back in the States. And uh, you used to be enlisted, right? Uh, for nine years. For nine, nine years. years? Nine years. And what rank did you switch over to? Staff Sergeant. East that East. must have been a, a heck of a day. It, it was a hard transition. All right. And uh, I, I felt that I possessed some of the skills of some of my uh, NCOs didn't have and it was a it was it was hard I'm sure it was so um, you haven't you've been to combat before right yes I was here for OIF one and with the 101st from what I can see Four. no no I'm sorry I'm sorry 56 56 medical evacuation battalion all right we were responsible for evacuating everybody uh, back in OIF one okay I've been talking to mostly support guys and and MPs that I've worked with and you know what would you tell people back in the states I mean everybody hears what Fox News has to say gloom and doom and a lot of politicians talking on the Pentagon channel you've been out you've you go out a lot you know moving supplies around you've been shot at a few times remember you came back you're a little bit rattled because uh, yes. somebody was shooting at you yes um, what do you think of that I'll ask you that first it's our mission here without being corny it's worth it uh, we we came here to liberate these people we came here to bring a taste of democracy. Yes. Unfortunately, there's some things that we need to accomplish first. But I can tell you from personal experience, we are making progress. Yeah. Steadily. Steadily. Uh, it's not a quick fix. This is going to go on. Just do not lose the support for the troops. We need you. Uh, this is a great cause. You should see some of the kids that we helped out. They appreciate what we do. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just we need to change the culture. These people have been used to being told what to do, what to think, how to do it. We come in here and we tell them, no, you need to think what, you know, how to do it. And it's, it's, on, your, it's on you to execute things. So it's, it's the culture that we need to change. Now, yeah. unfortunately, it's going to take a, at least one or two generations. So yeah. this is not a quick fix, but I support everything that we do. Uh, yeah, God I think we America. try hard. I, I got to agree with you with that. And what do you think about, you know, I told you the other, either yesterday or the day before that, you know, we went out to, to support that mission. I'd ordered all that stuff, a free issue, sat down for several hours to pick over it. You went to all the trouble to go get it, several pallets of stuff to give out from my mission and others. And I said, you know, this big hospital was so hot to have our help. And then they just said they don't want our help anymore. Nepotism. Bureaucracy. Yeah. The I thought it was system. fear. It's fear, too. Have you had other hospitals ever I have. suddenly? I have. We had, uh, we had clinics and hospitals where they were receptive to us. Hey, we need everything that you can uh, give us. They even took us around to their supply warehouses and said, hey, look, you know, this is what exactly. we have. And then we come back uh, a week after and say, hey, we have these supplies, and they're just adamant we refuse them because of the fact that they're saying that, hey, you know, it's they're the Ministry of Health, uh, the uh, Ministry of the Interior, they want us to try to do it ourselves uh, and when it, everything fails and yeah we can come in and save the day but yeah. uh, they right now at this point uh, the bureaucracy and the government is trying to make the system work but unfortunately they're they don't have the logistical support to do so it. So you didn't think someone might have come and talked to them and maybe warned them against taking help? It, it could be possible uh, you, you know they're they're pinned between a rock and a hard place. Yeah uh, but it, that's sad you know I was really really upset and I wasn't angry at the guy telling me no I was I was really angry at the system, you know, setting it up for him to say no, or for him so scared to take our help that he would have to say no. These people need to they need to understand that it's it's going to take them to like the the, the flame of change. It's not us. Yeah. We we can come down and take over whatever we need to take over, but it's them that need to stand up to the system. We can teach them, we can give them all the, the training, the equipment, but it's them. Yeah. Until somebody stands up and says, hey, I've had enough. I don't care if I die, but I'm going to light the, the flame of change. Yeah. Until then, we're just fixing a, we're putting a band-aid on a sucking chest wound. 
Yeah, I, I feel the same, but I, 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 uh, I, I, I feel kind of twisted about going back. You know, I feel guilty because I'm going back, and a lot of people aren't. And a lot of people have went home here in a box, and uh, or absent, you know, parts of themselves, literally. Um, and so, you know, I kind of touch on talking to people if they want to talk about any of that that they've experienced. Because a lot of people, they see the combat guys, the Marines, and they see, you've been shot at, I've been shot at, people have tried to kill us both in different ways, and we're not combat soldiers, really. No, no, but you have to be kind of a combat soldier no matter what you are here. You, you or do, you, do you agree with that? Yes, you adapt. Uh, you quickly realize that instinct and survival has to take over. It's no longer you saying, hey, I've been trained, you know, you're a soldier, yes, we received the training when we came in of how to defend yourself, how to, uh, basic infantry tactics, yes, yeah. we, ha we had that, but as far as for us doing everyday repetition where it's, it's an inherent uh, reaction, no, yeah. but your, your training and, the, and your will to survive takes over, yeah. you know, it's just you become so adapted to the situation that when you see fire, uh, rounds coming at you, when you see explosions, when you see people coming at you, you're, you're apt to react. And you, you realize that some of the training that you received back 10 years, 15 years ago, it's saving your life now. Yeah, I, I feel the same way because uh, the thing about explosions and things like that, that that tend not to rattle us as bad as some other Iraqi forces I've had experience with, I guess I understand now why they threw artillery simulators at us and shot over our heads, even though it was done in a fairly safe way, but, you know, it, to kind of have your mind understanding those noises are part of the environment. But, as, you know, I, I was a 13 Bravo before, which is a combat arms MOS. What was yours before? I was a combat medic. Okay, so you've been in, so you've been in combat arms units. I, I have. Line so, units, uh, engineers, uh, first cab, I was in first right. cab, fourth infantry division. Uh, I I cherish the up, you know my, my my upbringing in the military. Yeah. It was basically the soldiering, the discipline. Now it's paying off because I understand what these guys are going through, and yeah. uh, I also believe that we have conditioned ourselves for the situation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you have to when you leave the the safety of the the fob or the camp. You have to understand. You have to get it in your mind that at any point you could be a casualty or you can inflict casualties on the enemy. And you just, when you leave, you become a soldier. You're a yeah. warrior. So yeah, it, it's it's kind of hard for some people to understand. You know, from a doctor, medical service guy, uh, MPs. You know, that that's that's kind of a good point to hammer home. Anything else you like to say, irreverent? You can say anything you want. Use curse words. Nah, I. I you don't want to see my profession. I'll start it off. Damn. Darn it, gosh, Willard. No. Damn this and damn that. I just, you know, it's. I just want to. Tell everybody that's supporting us that uh, this is just cause. We're here for a reason. Yeah. Uh, we have mixed emotions ourselves at, at, at times. Yeah. That we go out one day and we see that the supplies that we deliver to them or the things that we fix for them are broken the next day. Or somebody says, hey, I can't use it because if I use it, I might die. Well, we're here to change that reason. We're here that 10 years, 20, 50 years from now, we can possibly look back at this experience and say, hey, we made a change. We made a difference. Yeah. I'm totally committed to this. Even though I have my own personal emotions, I try to deal with them, but uh, that's why we serve. That's so why we're here. You're being professional is what you're saying. Whether you, to. Yeah, you have to be a soldier. So I when you're to. a soldier, you're supposed to be a soldier, and it's you put your personal feelings aside and do the best job you can, even in spite of the frustrating things you said. It's, it's war. You know, it's combat. There's going to be days where we have our highs and our lows. Uh, things are going our way. Uh, I get I get down when we see a casualty rolling to the, the A station because it's like, hey, we're trying to help you. We're trying to change your life, mm -hmm. and you know we're not we're not here to change your religious outlook. We're not here to change your way of living. We're just trying to make it better for you, and it just it bothers somebody. Yeah. You ever talk to a terrorist? I not directly. Or, or someone I've arrested been. for terrorism? You know what? I've seen I've seen a few. You know I've actually I've gone into uh, the the brigade and. Also to the south side where they hold uh, some of the alleged terrorists. Okay. And one of the things that I pride myself in doing is looking at them in their eyes and seeing, hey, look, look at me and look at me where it's just me and you yeah. and I see you as a frail guy that's sitting there right now without 
no weapons, no nothing, and look at me. I'm ready to pounce on you, but the fact that I just want you to look at me, that I'm not afraid of you, that to me is, uh, it, it's a sense of saying, hey, I got you. Yeah. Uh, my, my experience was kind of, you know, I was talking through a translator to a guy from Fallujah, who was a Shi, uh, excuse me, a Sunni, and he was arrested for some sort of, uh, you know, a terrorist enterprise, whether he was making bombs or whatever. And, you know, we argued about politics and that sort of thing. And, you know, uh, it came to it. You know, he says, uh, I don't like the Americans being here and the Americans dying, but, you know, you shouldn't die. Which I thought was kind of silly because, you know, it had to point out to him when people attack our vehicles, it could be an infantry guy or me or anyone else in there that, well, you think I'm worthy enough to live, but you would, there, all of us are like this. And, you know, it's... Uh, it's it's there's a really weird mindset out there and uh, you know they just see a vehicle they see the brown uniform and they see a bullseye you know to on your chest you know it's, it's you know association they associate just because of the fact that we wear the U.S. Army and we wear uh, we have the American flag on our uh, right shoulder is that we're all there to flick harm no some of us are here to uh, all, I believe all of us even the, the infantry guy is out there to make his his uh, day better, his life a little bit better. Uh, they just, they need to understand that it's going to be collateral damage. Okay. And unfortunately, we try to limit that, but there's, it's going to be, we're going to, we're going to go out there and make somebody's day a really bad day if they happen to be at the wrong place at the right time. So. Yeah, yeah it's, it's sad and, and it's, uh, you know, uh, some people tried to IED us and all of us were screaming for blood, but the gunner fortunately didn't fire into the into the area because it was full of cars. So sure. fortunately, you know, th there are people remaining calm enough even under, and I've seen it, you know, there was a V-bid went off nearby and what did the Iraqis do? Uh, they were guiding a fob nearby. They just fired down the street in the general it's direction of the explosion or around it or just a fire uh, out of frustration or fear or whatever. So it's, it's like there's no... There's weird stuff going on here. There's no sense of... Uh, motivation, sense of, uh, hey, initiative, it's like, hey, somebody will tell me how to do it, Some, somebody will... Oh, you're talking about Iraqis? Iraqis, yeah, you yeah, know, we're changing that, uh, and again, it's... It's, it's, it's slow, I've seen my bit of it, so... You got anything else you want to say? You no, talked uh, for a long time, you really nice did well. Sir, nice knowing you, take care. Yeah, you got anything Back you want to tell them about me? Uh, I met Major Stuckey, to me, he's, n he's been a, nothing but a professional, I've gotten to know him through uh, some of my dealings from uh, supply interactions, uh, nothing but respect for the man. I've uh -huh. seen uh, some of his uh, skills as a healthcare uh, provider. I hope to one day emulate them. Uh, to me, I have nothing but respect for the man. That sounds like an army award almost. Thanks sure. a lot. That's and, awesome. Uh, sir, you take care of yourself. All right. And You're do the, the beer for me. Oh, I'll do that. I right, drink one and one.